हेलो गुड इवनिंग फ्रेंड्स एंड माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स टुडे अगेन वी आर लाइव टॉपिक एंड देयर विल बी फर्दर फ्यू मोर सेशंस ऑन द टॉपिक्स रिगार्डिंग द पेपर बी ई जी एल ए कोड नंबर वन थर्टी फाइव so in the last uh, month we had discussed about uh, the important paper of beg ae that was of 182 now there is one more important paper of beg la code is 135 and uh, the title of the paper is english in daily life so in the igno you know, system we had some um, foundation courses and elective courses and this paper beg la 135 code is of one of the optional papers regarding your language paper it is very important and interesting paper so those students who had studied earlier regarding the beg a foundation courses regarding the listening skills speaking skills reading skills and writing skills and communication skills so those students are going to be benefited from a discussion of this very important paper that is english in daily life because the reason is this that first of all we had understood the basic concepts of language the communication the process of communication the steps regarding in the process of communication channels of communication verbal communication non verbal communication right and those things were the theoretical concepts now we are going to discuss the important things of your the practical aspects here the paper 135 code beg la is going to be very helpful english in daily life and uh, like earlier papers this paper is also divided into four blocks and as per your credit score there are six credits for this paper for the earlier paper beg a there were four credits that's why we had held only four sessions and for this paper there are six credits and we are going to plan about uh, six sessions for six credits and for your study material if you have received the study material very good if you have not uh, received the study material still till date due to the lockdown restrictions then you can download the study material from the website egyankosh.ac.in and there uh, uh, from you can download the study material in the pdf uh, format you can print it out or you can also study with the help of your tablets ipads or the laptop so beg la paper 135 is again further divided into four blocks your studies material is available and there are four blocks and each block is having again paper 1 2 3 4 units so starting with your beg la uh, important thing the world around us so today we are going to focus the world around us and uh, when before going to the blocks uh, let me start with the block introduction and your what is the importance of uh, your study material and how it is going to be helpful so beg la 135 english in daily life so in the block introduction you can say that in our daily life we are having several needs and desires as the title of the paper is as the title of the uh, your paper suggests english in a daily life so this paper is going to help us this paper is going to teach us that how in our daily life we can take uh, steps or to be good communicators in english language undoubtedly that uh, english is not uh, our first language in india but even then with the advancement of science and technology with the advancement of your further communication channels then english is needed at every level b even these days you can see also that the globally we are using the facebook mediums or the google meets mediums and people across the globe from the different sides of the world they are coming together so that's why at professional level personal level social gatherings everywhere we are going to be in the need of this uh, english process and english application tools so he says that even in your block introduction it is mentioned that in our daily life we have several needs and desires and uh, we are confronting with major and minor problems so in our life there are some problems are also there and we have to face and we have to face grief and happiness so today we are not focusing only on the professional or on the uh, academic aspects even in our daily life 
the face we have to face means we have to confront the grief and happiness and in order to express the both we often have to communicate in english so necessarily in the four units of the block we cannot cover all aspects of our daily lives but even then we have chosen four areas it means uh, here in your study material there are four different areas where the vocabulary grammar speaking listening and reading and writing skills to engage with the issues of daily living so if there are four blocks and then there are four units so first of all that how we are going to start that family and friends so my dear students keep in mind that today we are focusing on the english in a daily life so english in daily life then first of all that in daily life we are coming in the company of family and friends then also describing the daily events and money matters are also there that we are discussing money matters and also public services so um, the teachers of igno and the teachers who have prepared the study material they say that we have arbitrarily chosen it means randomly we have taken four aspects and four aspects those are more important and those are more prevalent and daily in daily life we are coming across those uh, aspects so first family and friends and second describing daily events then of your money matters and also of your public services so these are very very important things and uh, when we are going to understand these things then the process of communication is effective then our purpose of learning these papers is also fulfilled and final and good and um, so this is the introduction to the block so first is of unit of your family and friends family and friends very important thing uh, the question is again coming to me uh, from the students that what is the need of this thing so just simple answer as i had earlier uh, conveyed that english in indian aspect is somewhat different because if when you are a student of english then you are a student of english as a second language like in these days the students who are going to foreign countries who, who want to study abroad they have to pass one test that is called ielts uh, that is acronym of the four words international english language testing systems right so ielts generally you call in the simple way or ielts uh, or t is silent so what is that or t sol teaching of english to the students of the other languages so english is a global language when we are in india and when we are studying this paper when i am teaching you are learning this is uh, this thing should be kept in mind that english for us is a second language sometimes it may be for our third language because there are some regional languages first is our regional language maybe hindi maybe punjabi maybe bengali maybe gujarati the language of our state of our province in india then our second language obviously national language hindi, hindi and third is of english so that's why in our school days we are taught three languages one is of our vernacular mother tongue second national language hindi and third english language so english is the official language for most of the indians because uh, uh, generally we prefer to uh, watch hindi serials hindi movies or hollywood movies because hindi is having like cultural and uh, social dimensions and the people from the different states of india they are also having this source of entertainment and at the same time simultaneously we are not forgetting our own personal language maybe i am having from punjabi background you are from the bengali background of the gujarati background right all indian languages are even acknowledged by the constitution of india and they are given the due respect fine but the point is this there is a limitation that those uh, languages are limited to the boundaries of their own state so once you are out of your state and you have to travel in uh, the different parts of india then you should need a uh, one common medium either you are speaking in hindi or you are speaking in english language and one more important point that even there are some uh, states in the southern india where hindi people hindi speaking people are in less number and they are uh, not very well versed in hindi language so that's why english is having important and prominent place fine so and here today we are going to start family and friends 
because there is a paper that is of BEGAE 182 where we had about listening skills or the professional writing skills or of your business correspondence but here English in daily life how you can improve because uh, generally students who uh, in the colleges for example I am teaching in a college and in in my classes students of the BA classes or the BCom classes first of all they are not concerned with the uh, understanding of English language paper of the they are not taking it seriously once the classes are over or that their BA class uh, course is over then they are going to the different coaching centers they there then they are learning English language so that's why I wish that students of this university in Gandhi National Open University that now simultaneously uh, in these even lockdown days we the university officials have taken this good uh, good step that uh, the, through this online medium of learning and teaching you are getting one more chance so and even uh, with the help of technology all these lectures are being recorded and you can also later on refer to the lectures so you should take maximum benefit out of these facilities so I am going to start with the first unit the unit is of family and friends so family and friends again the structure is clear what is the structure of the paper the objectives then uh, reading comprehension, vocabulary, listening, speaking, grammar, and uh, the writing, pronunciation, and again, final, he says, answers. So, my dear students, we should keep in mind that whether this paper is of BEGLA 135 or BEGAE 182 or any kind of language paper, that the same things are coming again and again. That is repetition, but that is not the repetition. You, you, you would think that it's a repetition that sir is saying same listening, speaking, reading and writing skills. That isn't the repetition. That is again of your a kind of uh, exercise, a kind of your making you more and more perfect in the communication skills. Because without your uh, practice, you can't be a good speaker, you can't be a good writer, you can't be a good listener, you can't be a good, a, you can't be a good reader. So in order to have all the skills fully developed, in our mind we have to be good good reader we have to engage ourselves in these activities and the language is confined into four dimensions like everything has dimensions dimension means different sides so language has four sides uh, in case of verbal communication so when you talk about listening skills speaking skills reading skills and writing skills it means you are talking about the verbal skills or verbal communication so when there is a verbal communication listening would be there speaking would be there reading would be there and writing so listening speaking reading and writing skills are coming so point is this that uh, you can't deviate from these things you can't ignore these things you have to rely upon these things right and again, if you want to be, and moreover, these things are interconnected. You can't say that I am a good reader, but you know, I, I am simply a good writer, but I am not a good speaker. So the scales are interconnected, like the dimensions are connected. If you see that there are the four dimensions of one piece, then they are interconnected. Same thing in, applicable in case of language. Listening, speaking, reading, and writing, they are technically interconnected. So if you are doing well in reading then obviously you are getting the ideas into your mind and later on you are going to express in case of speaking and writing properly and prospectively fine so that is the point um, family and friends uh, listening speaking grammar and also very important point is of your grammar grammar is very important because if you are not very concerned if you are not very clear about the usage of grammar sometimes you are having a kind of problematic situation so in english language vocabulary is very important and grammar is of utmost importance the reason is this because what is uh, grammar grammar is nothing grammar is simply those rules and regulations where we have to apply and those rules and regulations are applicable and then the words are arranged in a proper sense in a proper manner so it's a game of only vocabulary and grammar simple question what is the uh, simple solution to learn english language you can say that there are two points first is of the learning of vocabulary second is of learning of language 
rules or the set rules and those rules are nothing those rules are the rules of grammar okay now we are coming to your unit 1 that is of your family and friends so what are the objectives because uh, simultaneously I'm taking uh, some notes from your study material and referring to your study material because I know that students are uh, uh, having the study material with them if you have then for further future reference it is again beneficial so the objectives are first of all read and comprehend a personal experience and making inferences from the text evaluate a situation and provide a personal opinion and listening to the children's experience in the family and also use of one grammar so my dear students in these uh, all four blocks you will find that uh, uh, the grammar is having different uh, applications so every unit is having one or two important uh, uh, or the personal and uh, direct usage techniques of grammar like in this unit he is telling us the use of apostrophe what is apostrophe a kind of like we are having one small symbol on the top of the word so like a comma so if you are putting the letter then it is a comma means pause and if you're uh, putting the comma on the top of the letter then again using one more letter s then it becomes what is that that is called apostrophe like john apostrophe s johns b o y y apostrophe s boys or if it is plural like boys then boys apostrophe then there will be no one more s so apostrophe is one technique of punctuation in English language where it is used to describe the sense of belongingness or sense of possession. Like we say the book of boy or the boy's book. So of means belongingness, sense of belongingness that is use of apostrophe. So uh, using of apostrophe showing possession it is mentioned here. Then use the three forms of adjectives positive comparative superlative and then writing a paragraph describing a person right so uh, generally we all the students who you have uh, studied in your school days yes the teachers were telling you learn the degrees good better best right so degrees what are the degrees or the verbs so degrees of adjectives so first degree second degree third degree first means positive simple affirmative second comparative and third is of superlative right so again these things are mentioned here in your unit one and uh, then reading comprehension reading comprehension and uh, our son the between and one more uh, paragraph now we are coming to the vocabulary yes uh, starting with the vocabulary first of all that is of uh, point uh, 1.2 and 1.1 warm up that is uh, uh, called pre-reading uh, activities or pre-reading skills what is the generation gap and list some issues over which do you disagree with your parents yes please now family and friends so starting with the family so who what is the meaning of family how many members are there in the family who are the family members? So family means that uh, when the people are living together and they have a kind of relationship, the relationship is socially and legally established and the relationship is of uh, father, mother, son, daughter, brother, sisters, grandparents. So these are called the family members and the family members are dependent on each other and sometimes they are inherent to the property and uh, sometimes they are also legally liable so family is the important thing and the family has its own social cultural financial legal implications right but here the topic is of uh, uh, english in daily life use of language in daily life so in daily life we are going to start right from the beginning right from the family fine so family and friends first of all what is generation gap list some issues 
which you were disagree with your parents so generation gap so generation gap generally uh, it's so here it is a kind of this is called the orientation of your mind towards the topic so orientation of your mind orientation of your brain so generation gap generation gap what is the meaning of generation gap because generally in our uh, family is uh, very simple uh, simply these listen to these uh, uh, combination of words so generation gap so generation gap means that uh, uh, there is a gap of time between two generations like uh, of 30 years uh, for 25 or 30 years because if i am today 30 40 years old and my father is 70 years old then when he was uh, 40 years old and i was one year old then its time was 30 years ago so that gap is not of the persons the gap is of the total society the gap is of the time the gap is of the situations just imagine the situation 30 years ago how was the life 30 years ago the life was entirely different the social structure was different the financial sources were different the necessities were different the luxuries were different the facilities were different right so the way we generally we see that nowadays we are teaching and we are learning through the online mode even the small kids they are going to schools and in the schools like my son is going to school in the school he is having kind of uh, powerpoint presentations projectors smart classrooms and like air conditioned rooms but when we were students when we were students of the schools 30 years ago then there were different schools traditional schools and when our fa fathers uh, parents they have were going to schools again the situation was different 50 years ago and of the grandparents again of the many 80 70 80 years ago so what is that generation gap so we have to be clear about it generation gap is a social and uh, cultural and financial dimensions generally that's why we say reason is this that what is a human being human being is made of human being is the produce of this thing human being is simply a, like a social a being like a, a cultured animal but uh, your family background your situations your circumstances your teaching and learning your training your financial status your social status your educational status all these things are coming together and then they are making you as a human being so that's why every person today and the person 30 years ago they had different situations they had different uh, financial situations they had different educational situations so that's why it when the situations are different then when the training is different when the circumstances are different then obviously the thought process or the thinking would be different so that's the reason that uh, as a human being today what i'm thinking and uh, what the other previous generation is thinking is not going to meet fully so that is a kind of a generation gap and you can also have more points what is means i am just giving you the hints what are the reasons of the generation gap moreover this topic is uh, very close to the topic of sociology and the professors of sociology they can better uh, explain what is what is family and uh, what and what why are there are family disputes what is generation gap but here we are taking only one clue from that social aspect for communication in family and in the friends now here is we are having one more topic that is of reading comprehension reading comprehension that one comprehension one passage is given to us and uh, that our son the between ager so between ager again of the topic of the between two ages so he says that you may come across several events words in the passage which are unfamiliar in your cultural context so it is always interesting about how teenagers behave in different parts of the world there is similarity as well as which you may notice right so here one passage is taken and this passage is taken from 
explorations explorations and uh, written by H. T. Baker. So uh, very good. And here he says that uh, read the following uh, passage and question given below it. So first of all, we are having one extract piece of uh, uh, comprehension passage, and the passage is written by H. T. Baker, his name of the writer, and taken from Explorations Eight. Uh, name of the book or the source. So read the following passage and answer the questions given below it. So when you are going to, my dear students, if you are having the study material ready with you, you can see that it is of the page number 6. You can see that uh, there are some uh, phrases and how the people are talking to each other in the family. So don't talk with your mouth full. I haven't got my mouth full. You are still talking with your mouth full. Stop it. I haven't got my mouth full. The boy said distinctly. He opened his mouth wide so I, that I could observe the pink interior of the empty cavity. So it is kind of uh, so that I don't have more time that I am going to study and read the whole passage. But the message is this. Uh, of uh, or The purpose of reading this uh, comprehension is that how the people are communicating in different situations within a family. Because as today we are discussing, that family and friends, English in daily life, family and friends. So starting with the family, because uh, we are living in a family, and in our family we are having some um, problems or the dis uh, discussions. So complete, when you are going to read, page number 5, 6, to seven if you're having study material with you my dear students then family and friends that is of starting from the page number five to six and seven wrong so i'm just reading the last lines wrong that is the funny part of it i mean if he were anybody else's son else's else apostrophe s i wouldn't want him around but this one is uh, welcome to stay. So he's all mixed up and full of conflicts he can't resolve because he doesn't really know what they are. And he, he's irritable and uh, far too talkative, but most of all, uh, really rather lovable. So he's a between -ager, not a bad boy anymore, not yet a man, just a something in between so here he is giving us example of a growing uh, a boy and he is calling him between ager neither man neither a boy a kind of uh, the age age of transition teenage to becoming a mature person right so now you what do you have to do means how we can uh, develop our communications that you have to identify yourselves in their situation. Identify means just imaginary. You have to think that now the situation is this. If you are of the same age, the boy is mentioned in the passage, then you can understand well that uh, this is the situation and how this situation is dealt with and uh, how I have to behave in that situation. So simply you have to answer the question so when you are answering the question, you are simply getting that topics clear in your mind. For example, what are the questions mentioned? So the questions are that uh, answer the following questions. In what two ways does the boy in the story break table manners? What happened when the son shaved for the first time? So why was the son not disturbed when his pocket money was stopped? And how did the boy irritate his mother? So these are the different situations and in these different situations the matter is made clear. And one more, okay, what kind of a father was the author? So the passage is written from the uh, perspective and from the angle of the father. So now Yes, uh, how can I increase my vocabulary? So uh, one student is asking the question. Yes, we are coming to the same point. My, my dear student, just wait. I'm coming to the same point uh, in one or two minutes. That is topic of vocabulary. 
uh, how can I develop my, how can I improve my vocabulary? So, before coming to the vocabulary, one point is left, drawing inferences. So, drawing in inferences, inferences means that you are going to draw the meaning or draw means extract the meaning, extract the uh, uh, idea out of that inference, right? And what are the young and the old bull and laughing at me secretly? So these are some, again, the important points of reading comprehension. Second, now, uh, next point is coming of 1.3 vocabulary. Vocabulary is very important thing. Because uh, if you are a good reader, if you're a good writer, if you want to be a good speaker, uh, or listener, every time you need vocabulary. So what is vocabulary? So in order to understand uh, the importance of vocabulary, we have to understand first of all the background of vocabulary. Vocabulary is, is simply, you can say, the list of words. In the simple words, you can say, what is vocabulary? List of words. And what are words? Or what is a word? So, every, each and every word is having distinct meaning. So, you can go back in the history of language, and when you are going back into the history of any language, here specifically of English language, then you can see how the words are formed. Because there is complete system of the word formation because sometimes you're referring to the different dictionaries and there it is also mentioned that this word is coming from that very much specific language maybe of latin language or maybe of the roman language because human this kind of process of language process of communication is ever evolving for last five thousand years uh, when the human civilization records the you can see that whether it was greek or devil, uh, Greek civilization or the Roman civilization in those parts of the world or in the Indian system of our Sanskrit or the golden age of India. Every civilization had done a lot of hard work for the development of knowledge corpus. And in the knowledge corpus there is a language. And in the language there are words. So here, today we are concerned with the... So in the English language uh, system, how we can develop our, our vocabulary? So my dear students, the simple answer is this, that uh, it is not about uh, the cramming. It is not about uh, uh, that you are going to cram uh, for, uh, uh, you are simply like you are cramming the sentences or the answers. Vocabulary is improved by using it, by choosing it in your life. First of all, you have to acquire it. Second, you have to use it. First, first of all is of acquiring, second is of then again of choosing. How you can go into acquire it, acquiring and then it is application. So in our daily life, simply to start with is you have, because now again you have to take the help of dictionaries. And uh, in India we are using bilingual dictionaries, English to Hindi or English to Punjabi, English to any other language. So, but I prefer personally or I suggest personally to go with the English to English dictionary. Actual dictionary is English to English dictionary and uh, the good dictionary that I personally use is Oxford Advanced Learners Dictionary and these days I think there is ninth edition hard links of 600 or 700 rupees uh, cost is this of this dictionary. And, uh, and if you have time you can also watch uh, online videos if it is available the, about uh, phonetics and because uh, uh, when I'm taking the classes in my generally simple counseling sessions there I teach something about phonetics what is phonetics those are called phonetic symbols because when you open a dictionary you see there are some symbols are given so those symbols are going to be helpful in the learning of good and real pronunciation because in English language there are the different uh, um, problems regarding the learning of vocabulary because when you come across a new word you don't know how to speak or how to pronounce speak means how to pronounce the word then first of all you have to learn the pronunciation of the word means when you are speaking it how you have to speak it second it's spellings spellings means then how you have to write it third is of its meaning and fourth is of again usage in the sentences because sometimes one word is at the same time a verb, sometimes it is also a kind of adjective. Like for example, fast, fast is also a noun, 
व्रत फास्ट इज ऑल्सो ऑब्जेक्टिव सो ईच वर्ड इज फॉलोइंग अंडर डिफरेंट कैटेगरीज ऑफ द दैट इज कॉल्ड द स्पीच डिफरेंट कैटेगरीज ऑफ लाइक नाउन पर नाउन वर्ब अडवर्ब ऑब्जेक्टिव पार्ट ऑफ स्पीच राइट सो वन वर्ड इज कमिंग अंडर वर्कैबलरी ऑफ द वर्ब एज वेल एज एट द सेम टाइम ऑफ द Uh, other parts of speech so this is very important so there are four points first is of the pronunciation second spellings third meaning fourth it's pa coming the which head of the parts of it's a noun or a pronoun it's a which kind of it's a parts of speech fine okay so vocabulary and what are the sources of learning vocabulary again the question what are the sources of learning vocabulary so simple source and the simple and easiest ways of your newspaper daily newspaper and make it a habit that you are going to read the english newspaper and uh, english newspaper some newspapers are meant for the professionals and some papers are meant for the generally simple students and in each uh, newspaper you are having the words from the different backgrounds reason is this that uh, if you want to improve your vocabulary there is a difference my dear students keep in mind there is a difference there is a difference that uh, uh jargon and vocabulary so what is jargon jargon is called the technical language for example if you are a lawyer if you have seen that there are some advocates or there are the lawyers you call them lawyers and uh, there are advocates in the courts and they they are using a different set of words or if there are the scientists they are using set different set of words that is called the technical language the jargon that the language set of words particular and applicable to a confined group of knowledge but in case of learning of vocabulary we have to learn the vocabulary from the different backgrounds from the different resources reason is that when you are going to apply the words you are going to apply in the different modes in the different for the different purposes so that's why the general or the first hand knowledge of the words from the different sources of important for example there are the resources from sports so media and uh, business uh, and uh, politics economy so these are different fields and from the different fields you can gain the different words and then you can use in when you are going to speak or when you are going to write and uh, Yes, pronunciation is very important, and uh, the students again question asking the question that uh, the, I don't understand the phonetic symbols. Yes, you can't understand simply the phonetic symbols. Either you have to attend the class for it because there are forty-four symbols, and in some universities this uh, paper is taught at M.A. level because uh, when we were students in M.A. English, then there was one paper. Phonetics and grammar of English in in M A first M A English first year. So there we also learnt and in the symbols and the professors of uh, the language and linguistics they had taught us. So for this you you need help of teacher and all because this demands practice. And uh, like there are uh, till date uh, I think many of the students feel that uh, there are only five words A E I U U you are taught. Till date, only this point that there are four, only five vowels. But when you go for the understanding of the phonetics, then you will see that uh, actually there are twenty vowels and twenty-four consonants, and total forty-four speech sounds are there in English language. Actually, we are having only twenty-six alphabets A to Z. There are twenty-six alphabets, but actually there are forty-four speech sounds, like th, for th. uh in english there is no specific letter sometimes we're using th or the other so and also using th for the dh so dh th many sounds are there and uh, and for fa sometimes phone we're using ph and for fan we're using f so many variations and many things are prevalent there so this was uh, again a small introduction to the vocabulary and uh, and one thing is possible these days with the help of technology if you are having smartphones uh, with you then in the smartphones you can also download the uh, dictionaries Go, uh, that is called uh, good dictionary like oxford dictionary is available i think and i have also downloaded uh, 
in my smartphone and uh, there you can also when you are going to click the symbol of the sound you can listen to it so that is recorded sound so that is help of technology if you want to take that when you're going to touch the sound that symbol of the sound you can listen the sound is recorded there is no need of any phonetics uh, symbols just simply by the listening to the sound the i think but those dictionaries are somewhat costly near about uh, i think 2000 rupees you have to pay at the google pay and you can download the oxford dictionary's original version then you can also t uh, take uh, the learn the pronunciation so this is one other way out if you can afford it now next is of your listening again listening so it says before you listen to the audio and uh, you need to read all the questions given below so these questions will give you an idea about what you need to focus on listen to the audio once through and uh, then listen again so again here is talking about the listening and speaking skills and the listening and speaking skills if uh, you are given one kind of audio or uh, if uh, any kind of cassette is provided but here we don't have any kind of that audio uh, material readily available so just we can say that listening and speaking again i'm just uh, giving a gist of the idea the topic is that uh, uh, listening and speaking we can speak well when we are listening to it effectively how so it is very good thing but that's not possible for you students those who are doing uh, the uh, igno system through the igno system because uh, in the it is possible for the traditional classes for example if i'm teaching in the classroom and i'm speaking for one hour in my lecture and the student is listening for one hour so if he or she is listening for one hour continuously daily then you start speaking it gradually again and again listening again and again then you start speaking it gradually but for that you need more time but here in case of distance education mode system that thing is not possible right so now then is of speaking listening and speaking are important aspects obviously we are going to discuss again and again uh, in the coming sessions also so here today it is only of the introductory lecture where we are discussing about uh, uh, family and friends uh, and uh, the other topics then he says grammar grammar is a apostrophe today one topic apostrophe apostrophe a p o s t r o p h e apostrophe the symbol of punctuation so what is apostrophe so he has given us four sentences the razor belongs to the father so the shawl belongs to the mother the toys belong to the babies the books belong to the children so he says in the four sentences something is shown as belonging to the person so sense of belongingness you understand what is the meaning of belong belong means in the connection in the of the possession so he says the apostrophe is used to show the ownership of something shows possession so sense of belongingness sense of connection sense of uh, possession right so he says what is this now let us understand the rules of the possessives read the singulars noun and the possessive father so he says the razor belongs to the father one sentence and here in the sentence you can say it is the razor belongs to the father he says it is father's razor f a t h e r apostrophe means a kind of uh, simple comma on the top of the letter r then s so for apostrophe what are the rules and for apostrophe then and uh, using s so the s and apostrophe these things show the sense of belongingness so it is father's razor it is mother apostrophe s mother's shawl and now he says of these were of the singular words like uh, father fathers mother mothers now there are babies so if it's about the plural form it's uh, the babies 
these are the babies twice so because in case of plural you are having already s letter at the end of the word like babies so if it is of the baby b a b y then it is uh, singular but it is of b a b i e s babies then you can see that these are the babies so simply what do you have to do you simply put the letter uh, of uh, simply put the comma apostrophe on the top of the letter and discard s because there will be no two s there will be only one s the s is at the end of the word and just one more letter is not required only one simple apostrophe that simple mark on the top of the letter is required like the now the book belong the books belong to the children now again one more thing these are the children's books now here there is a difference though they are the babies plural but the word was ending with s here children plural but the word is ending with n so this is the difference be careful i don't say that uh, all the plural words uh, should be used only the mark of apostrophe and no s i was saying and i am saying that there should be no use of two s if the plural form of the word is ending with a letter s then there is no need of one more s if it is ending with another because there are many like child child is singular but children plural so then there will be these are the children's books so he says let us understand the rules so my dear uh, students so just in short in brief so what are the rules of uh, uh, apostrophe so rules are first read the singular nouns and their possessives father father's razor mother mother's shawl bank bank's address now boss again so boss b o s s boss although the word is ending with s but it is singular again you have to use so the word the singular word ending with s will have apostrophe and s but the plural words ending with s will have only apostrophe so this is a difference like boss b o s s or double s b o boss bosses b o double s apostrophe s right so it is only the understanding of the singular and plural so if the singular ending with s obviously there would be the use of apostrophe and s if it is plural ending with s then like babies then there will be the use of only apostrophe only apostrophe and no more as right like princess so princess prince the uh, the feminine form of uh, prince princess the female princess again that is of princesses that is princess apostrophe s now read the plural nouns and their possessives yes this is important for you and i think you should keep in mind boys b o y s boys so boys a plural form only apostrophe ladies again ending with the s ladies only ladies apostrophe dresses again dresses only apostrophe now men you see man is singular but men is plural so if you want to have uh, the one more uh, apostrophe possession how would you use men's m e n apostrophe s and children again children apostrophe s right so he says a possessive is formed by adding so in the end we can say that a possessive is formed by adding apostrophe plus s to any singular noun like mothers so first there are three rules keep in mind first apostrophe plus s to any singular noun like mother mothers apostrophe plus s to a plural noun not ending in s 
I repeat apostrophe plus s to plural noun not ending with s like children. So it will become children's. Then third only apostrophe of only apostrophe to a plural nouns ending in s like boys. So if you say boys hostel, if you have to write boys hostel, how would you write? B O Y S apostrophe only and hostel boys uh, classroom right B O Y S apostrophe classroom right so today in this topic because uh, otherwise these things uh, appear to be very simple you would see that uh, uh, these things are very simple and we have learned in our school days fine obviously you must have learned but these things are so important and uh, although these things look very minute or small things but when you are using in your language skills when you are using in your written material when you are using in the spoken form then these small things or uh, minute things show that whether you are having knowledge of it or not otherwise it, it shows our sense of uh, expertise or our sense of ignorance of the topic then there are some my dear students check your progress of five he says rewrite the following sentences using an apostrophe the dance of the gypsies was delightful so you can say the gypsies apostrophe only because plural dance was delightful the tail of the donkey went up into the uh, went up in the air this box belongs to Ravi's this is Ravi's box, so on and so forth. This is about uh, check your progress 5. And uh, complete the following uh, sentences and complete the news story. Use the apostrophe appropriately. Okay, comparison of uh, adjective. Yes, comparison of adjective. Uh, last point of today's lecture of comparison of adjectives. So, comparison forms of adjective. The so forms of adjective that positive, comparative, and superlative. So, positive, comparative, and superlative. So, first of all, like he's saying that sweet, sweeter, and sweetest. So, these are the three degrees. Because in the schools, we are taught to learn degrees, learn verbs, learn nouns, learn masculine and feminine change gender, nouns, verbs, yes, we were, uh, we have done all these things over school days, and also degrees, and uh, like the verbs go, went, gone, right, tall, taller, tallest, so there were lists, you know, just we have been cramming and we have been memorizing, so again today, same, these are the basic concepts, yes, for the good and effective use of uh, all these things, the basic concept should be very much clear. So again, it is, uh, uh, you can say, reiteration or again, recalling of those basic concepts. And uh, um, positive, comparative and superlative. So there are three degrees. Positive, he says, sweet, one, there is no comparison. Sweeter, it means sweeter. Comparison, so for comparison, you need more than one. So for comparison, you need more than one, at least there should be two, because more than one means minimum two, and third is superlative, superlative, so there could be more than two, so if there are more than two means three, four, five hundred thousand, it's superlative, so in for comparison, you need more than one, means minimum two, and for superlative, you need more than two, so more than two means it may be three or three hundred, or 5000. So positive degree of the adjective denotes uh, some quality. So uh, it is of quality, some qualities denoted and comparative degree of the adjective denotes a higher degree of the quality. So that was some quality and it's about higher quality and when two things or the two sets of things are compared, higher quality and the superlative degree denotes the highest degree of the quality and is used when more than two things or two sets of things are compared.
So although it seems to be very simple, but uh, I again re repeat or uh, for your understanding that positive comparative superlative positive some quality. Second, comparative higher degree of quality. Two things or two uh, sets of things are compared. Then superlative highest degree of the quality and used when more than two things or two sets of things are compared right so this is about your degrees and uh, next point is of writing describing people and uh, describing people starting with the progress and again pronunciation silent letters so yes all are important uh, so i can take uh, i think we have more two to five minutes yes we can see that uh, one more important point of uh, uh, pronunciation yes students are asking again this question just with the, this topic we are going to finish uh, one unit okay then you can go with your uh, personal check your progress activities fine so pronunciation silent letters <clears throat> so in english you generally do not uh, pronounce all the letters in a word I mean there are some words which are pronounced and some uh, letters are not pronounced so some letters are in words are silent they are called silent letters so in other words they are not pronounced listen to them carefully and repeat each word like b is silent in the spelling and uh, final position m b and b t like uh, debt so d e b t debt b is silent doubt d o u b t we don't say doubt but doubt right bomb b o m bomb climb and tomb com and thumb right so again there are some uh, d's silent like uh, adjoin adjust and uh, adjacent and g's silent <coughs> in spelling some sequences like sign resign assign and net paradigm right h is silent in spellings like uh, ghetto ghost k is silent yes like we say k is silent knee so knee body part so k n e e we say knee and no k n o w we say no don't say no knife k n i f e knife knock knock at the door k n o c k knock and l is silent before key in the word like walk v w l k we don't say walk we say walk talk calm palm bam and fork right then n is silent in the word uh, for example with m n column and uh, solemn condemn p is silent in the word initial spelling like pneumonia psychology pseudonym t is silent in the words like castle listen fasten bustle and w is silent in the final position like saw right rest wrist show snow whom whole whose right so uh, these are some silent word because uh, i was thinking that uh, uh, the ending we can also use uh, these words pronunciation because this is also the topic of vocabulary that's why i have taken 2 minutes for silent letters and all the list is not final this is only a beginning you can't say the words i have pronounced this is a final list this is only a reference my dear students keep in mind this is for your reference and you have to understand that there are many words in the english language which are silent and for understanding for proper use of the uh, vocabulary for the proper use of uh, the language english language we have to learn so that's why i again say and i say for many times that uh, you have to learn the pronunciation because for example otherwise uh, it is written pneumonia or psychology the psychology word is starting with p p s y p is silent if you don't uh, learn or if you haven't understood now you would say p psychology psychology that is wrong pronunciation right 
so that is just understand the importance of the pronunciation uh, understand uh, otherwise you would speak it uh, psychology wrong it is psychology it means p is silent you would say uh, p pneumonia the p is silent it is pneumonia so this is so important thing and uh, uh, i wish that uh, you try to apply these uh, things in your learning process and uh, this is uh, going to be the ending of the today's session i think this is all for today so session and tomorrow again we will meet with at same time 5 pm with more discussions i think that there are five more sessions uh, if it is possible there are six credits and six sessions for this begla so today we have started the basic things and basic concepts of the grammar apostrophe silent letters and the topics in the family so that's all for today thank you so much for listening to me and uh, watching online and tomorrow we meet again and uh, until then goodbye best of luck